Hi, welcome to Candela. In this lecture, we shall discuss a very interesting chapter in anthropology, Mendelian genetics in man family study. This is unit 6.2 in paper 1 of UPSC anthropology syllabus. Under this topic, we shall be discussing various subtopics like single factor, multi factor, monogenic inheritance, polygenic inheritance, lethal genes sublethal genes and semi-lethal genes as well. Before we further go into discussing each of these topics, first let, let us try to understand what is the meaning of factor. What do you mean by factors? Gregor Johann Mendel is the father of genetics. He discovered the laws of inheritance. We have three important laws of inheritance, the law of dominance, the law of segregation and the law of independent assortment. When Gregor Johann Mendel was conducting experiments, he discovered that there was something which was responsible for the transmission of traits or characters from one generation to the next generation. He called these things as factors, single factor or monogenic inheritance. Here a single gene influences a particular trait or character and it follows Mendel's laws. That means a single gene from the father and a single gene from the mother is sufficient to express a character in the offspring or the child. We shall try to understand this using this set of examples. The first one is ABO system of blood grouping. When there is a marriage between a person belonging to A blood group and another person belonging to O blood group, then we can only have children which have either a A blood group or a O blood group. There is no possibility that the couple will get a child belonging to a B blood group or an AB blood group. This can be very well used in forensics and parent determination experiments. Tongue roller. Those people who can roll their tongue like this are called as rollers and people who cannot do that are called as non-rollers. This is a good example for monogenic inheritance or single factor. The next example is tasters. There is a substance called as phenylthiocarbamide. In short, it is called as PTC. So according to whether people can taste PTC or not, we can classify them as tasters and non-tasters. The tasters can taste the PTC and feel a bitter feeling in their tongue. Whereas the people who cannot taste it, that is they do not feel any taste in the tongue when they put this PTC into their mouth are called as non-tasters. This is again a Mendel's character. It is called anonychia. Anonychia means the absence of nails in the fingers. Achondroplasia. It means short limbed dwarfism. Here you can see all these people are having very short hands and very short legs. This is also a Mendel's character. Chin fissure. This groove in the chin region is called chin fissure. This is also a Mendelian trait. Next one is Darwin's tubercle. The thickening of the ear pinna is called Darwin's tubercle. Here you can see it. This is also a Mendelian trait and it follows monogenic inheritance. The next one is mid digital hair. This is called mid digital hair, multifactor or polygenic inheritance. Here many genes located at different loci or location will influence a single factor and this do not follow Mendel's pattern of inheritance. We shall try to understand this using certain examples like skin color, body shape and size, height etc. Say there is a marriage between a father who is dark skinned and a mother who is fair skinned. 
there are different set of genes that is more than around 5 genes from different loci which come together to form the skin color in the children. So there are various permutation and combinations which happen in deciding the skin color of the children. So the children might be very fair or they might be dark skinned or they might have a range of colors in between these two. This is called polygenic inheritance. Similarly, we can see the difference in the case of body shape and size and height also. When a tall man marries a short woman, the children need not be either tall or short only. They can be in between any of this. So this is what we mean by multifactor or polygenic inheritance that is uh, many genes located at different loci come together to express a character. The examples for that is skin color, height, body shape and so on. Lethal genes. As the word suggests, lethal genes are the one which kill its possessor. The genes which kill its possessor are called lethal genes. Under lethal genes, we have various types that is semi-lethal, sub-lethal, conditional lethal and we also have dominant lethal and recessive lethal. Semi-lethal, the genes which kill its possessor after the attainment of adolescence are called as semi-lethal. That is the person will have the genes right from birth but up to the age of around 40 they will have a normal life and these genes express in them after around the age of 40 and then they kill them. So these genes are called as semi-lethal genes. Next one is sub-lethal genes. Sub-lethal genes are the ones which kill its possessor even before the attainment of adolescent age. That is kids having this they do not even grow up to adolescence. Even before attaining adolescent age they will be killed by these genes. Next one is conditional lethal. Conditional lethal are the ones these are the genes which may be lethal in one condition but may not be lethal in another condition. Say for example phenylketonuria. Phenylketonurics if these people are given a diet which is completely free of phenylalanine then the expression of this gene can be controlled or delayed. That is people who are supposed to get phenylketonuria if they are given a diet which is completely free of that is which does not contain any phenylalanine then there is a chance that this disease can be delayed or it can be controlled. Then we have dominant gene and recessive genes dominant lethal and recessive lethal. Dominant lethal genes are the ones which are capable of expressing themselves and killing the person even if they are present in the heterozygous condition. So these genes are the ones which express themselves even under heterozygous condition and can kill the person. Whereas the recessive lethal genes are the ones which express themselves only under homozygous condition. Okay? So they express themselves only under homozygous condition. So under this again we have sublethal. An example for that is epiloia. Epiloia is a disease in which there is multiple skin tumors and death is usually caused in early infancy. This gene always arises by fresh mutations. The next one is semi-lethal. The example for that is Huntington disease. Huntington disease is a neurodegenerative disease which occurs at a later stage in life say around after 40 years or after 60 years or so. Okay? So this is a neurodegenerative disorder where the person makes jerky body recessive lethal. Here the genes are capable of expressing themselves only in the homozygous condition. That is only if the gene is present in homozygous condition it will express and cause the death of the person who possesses this gene. Under that we have example sublethal and semi-lethal. Sublethal for example sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is a disorder where the hemoglobin becomes sickle shaped like this. It turns into sickle shape because of which the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood gets reduced and it is a, again a fatal disorder. Then we have under semi-lethal hemophilia. Hemophilia is a disease where there is reduced or there is no clotting of the blood. So in case of injuries there is no clotting of blood and this can also be fatal. Thank you.